Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. So when you're building something in Excel, typically color is not the first thing on your mind. If you do use colors, you're probably going to be using the default set of colors that comes built into Excel. <laughs> That's what most people end up doing at least. And it just isn't uh, it just isn't the most important thing to most people when they're when they're initially building out whatever they're building out their worksheet, their dashboard, their model. Um, and I think that could be a missed opportunity sometimes. Um, color can be a really effective tool for communicating. It's a great way to highlight things, emphasize things, show contrast, show you know diverging, uh, diverging spectrums. It can do all sorts of things. So I just want to give some quick tips to get you up to speed on how to use color, uh, show you what I do and what I think is kind of effective for most people, and uh, hopefully uh, enable you to do some of this yourself. Uh, so this is all a template from my newsletter. Um, if you're not signed up, I'll have a link below. Uh, and I send these out for free on the newsletter. So this is one of the emails in this uh, that's part of the newsletter. And it's just about how I use color. And it starts with one big point, which is if you're not a designer, if you're not an artist, if that's just not your cup of tea, you just don't want to deal with any of it, first thing you can do is go Ask the designer wherever you work if you have a brand guide or style guide already. A lot of organizations have these and they will give you a clear set of colors to use that have been vetted by a designer. Boom, there you have it and then you don't have to worry about it anymore. You just use those colors and those colors alone and you're set. Um, if you don't have that, you can go and see if maybe your organization has a, has a PowerPoint template and you can grab colors out of the PowerPoint template and use those instead. Um, that's just going to save you a lot of time and you're going to know that whatever you're using matches your brand and has been reviewed by a designer. So that's my tip if you just don't want to have to deal with any of this. But if you do, if you are jumping into it head first and you want to do it yourself, first thing I ask is, are you going to do a light theme or a dark theme? Um, dark themes are kind of in style right now, but they're not always the most effective way of highlighting your data. They're sometimes don't have enough contrast for easy readability. And more importantly, if you're at an enterprise company, I found that almost all enterprise companies prefer light themes and that their brand and style guides are set up for light themes. Uh, there's a million reasons for this. I won't really get into it, but if you want to play it safe, in this case, a light theme is probably your best bet. Um, when you're choosing colors, I'm not going to dive into the nuances of analogous, triadic, complementary, and monotone colors, but I'll just say this. Find your starting color, one that you like, Maybe it's your logo color. Maybe it's a color from the themes that you have. And use that as your base. Start from there. Then find some related colors. Now those could be colors that are very different and have contrast. That would be like a triadic color scheme. Or they can be colors that are maybe not like that at all. Maybe you want some colors that are very, very analogous and very similar because you're trying to create a really clean design that's very all part of the, very, the same kind of uh, the same kind of related color scheme. Um, again, this is kind of more art than science oftentimes. And if you want to skip this part as well, or if you want to save yourself some time on this part as well, then what I suggest you do is use a free color picker tool. Uh, Adobe has a great one. If you just Google Adobe color uh, palette tool, I think it's like the first result. Or if you just Google color palette tool, you can find any color palette tool. Um, those will help you and they'll choose a color for you. Also, if you have a designer on your team, talk to your designer, see if they can help you. Uh, there's really no better option than talking to a professional designer. Um, so if you have that option, definitely take it. The first thing I think about after I've got a general sense of the colors I want to use is my foundation. And when I talk about foundation, I'm talking about like the background of, in this case, my dashboard. What is the base layer? Uh, the pieces that kind of organize my page. If I am doing, uh, if I'm using data that is all kind of a similar category, I'll often just do a single color, and that color is going to just be either a an overall background, like you see here with stuff layered on top of it, or I might use that color as kind of like a highlight color, like here, something that draws your attention, makes you focus in. Um, so it can, it can serve either purpose, but when you're using a single color, things are a little bit simplified. And if you're not worried about tons of different categories of data or creating contrast or any of that stuff, this can, 
this can be the easiest way to go about things. But if you have data that is segmented into clear categories, let's say you have a marketing dashboard and it's got social media data, paid ad data, and I don't know, email newsletter data. <laughs> you can use colors as a way to highlight each of those categories and keep them separate. So let's say in this case we have one color for each of those categories. We can then keep that color scheme consistent so that people know which data is related. If this is the um, paid ad color, then I know that this is probably also paid ad data because it's the same color. If this is social media, I know that this is probably also social media. You have to stay very consistent if you do this, right? Only use that color for that category. But that can be a really effective uh, tool to have. Um, the other thing I'll mention here is that I typically use sort of related colors for this. When I say related, I mean warm colors or cool colors, colors that are a little bit closer to each other. Uh, and that's just because I think it looks cleaner. And when you have like a bunch of really, really different uh, colors on a page like this, to me, things can just start to feel kind of, I don't know, a little messy. Um, but again, no, there's no single set of rules here. You have to do what matches your particular situation. And your designer, if you have one, is going to be a great person to ask about this sort of thing. Uh, and if you don't, it's OK. Just stay safe and maybe use related cool colors or related warm colors for this base foundational layer. After you have your base foundational layer, you're going to be starting to think about your visualizations. Um, visualizations really just have a couple core rules that I think you really need to know about going into it. So let me jump in here to give you a sense. The first big one, if you have multiple series of data, make sure you provide enough contrast that people can see the difference. If you look at this and you have to pick, pick out which one of these lines is Australia, it's going to be very difficult because they're all very similar blue colors. There's just not enough contrast to know what's what. And that can be really problematic. If I was using this chart to make big decisions, I could make a really expensive mistake because I misinterpreted one line as another line. That could be really critical. So create enough contrast. When you do create that contrast, also consider colors that have strong associations with them. Bright reds and bright saturated greens are often associated with good, bad, up, down, profitable, uh, you know, <laughs> profitable, not profitable. Um, and you have to be a little careful using them. So if you're using it and you think maybe adding this bright red series is going to confuse someone because they might think, oh, maybe this one's bad for some reason, play it safe and just tone the colors down a little bit. In this case, we're still using green, but we're using a toned down green. We're still using red, but we're using a more purpley red. And that kind of saves you from any confusion around colors that have strong associations. Um, and the other thing I would just say here is you can get creative and think about what you're trying to communicate and how you're trying to communicate it. So if I am putting a chart in front of somebody and I have one series that I like one line on that chart that I really need people to focus on that might be a great opportunity to just style that one line in a strong contrasting color great then my points getting made a little more effectively people know where to look I'm guiding the person I'm communicating with my data um, if I'm doing something where I need strong categories where I need to keep things consistent and make sure somebody always knows one color is associated with another thing, it's it's good to take the time to get in there and make sure every instance of one particular piece of data is the same color. That's kind of using categories, categorical uh, color uh, coloring. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but I think the take home point is that there's no simple answer I can give you for how to always handle it all of the time. But what I can tell you is when you're picking out colors for something, pause and think about what it is you're trying to communicate and how color is going to serve what you're trying to communicate. That seems oversimplified maybe, but just taking that time, which most people don't take, just two minutes to think about that is going to go a long way to help you communicate more effectively. So that's all I've got for you today. Um, like I said, this is part of the newsletter. I'll have a link below if you're not already signed up for the newsletter, um, where I send out things like this each uh, week or every couple of weeks. 
And if you have questions, comments, if you're using data, in, if you're using color in your own reports and want to just chat or share whatever you're doing, you can reach out to me. Uh, you can reach out to me here or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, there should be links for that as well. I love talking with people that follow and watch these and hearing what you're working on. So feel free to reach out. Anyway, thanks so much, everybody. Have a good one and uh, good luck on your Excel color journey.